right now, uh, in terms of students um, and student migrant workers, the largest number in New Zealand is from India, and then I think the second largest is from China. So um, you can imagine how many people come in contact with us. We were hearing more and more stories of how um, these youngsters were being exploited in their workplace and um, some of the stories were horrific. Um, you know we heard of cases like where if for example a, a person worked in a restaurant and they weren't paid uh, for their job they were just given a um, couple of meals a day and that was it. Um, so it was very, very, uh, you know, brought tears to my eyes on a number of occasions. There are different forms of exploitation. It's not just about being underpaid. Uh, you know, it comes in all forms, shapes and sizes. So sometimes the person who's being exploited doesn't even realise it's happening to them. So they're, they're taking out loans to pay their fees here. Uh, and then um, a lot of them are, are being exploited even before they set foot on New Zealand soil because they're coming through agents um, who take their cut uh, even before these guys start going to their classes in a college. So uh, a lot, lot of the institutions in New Zealand, um, they will only um, take in applicants through agents. Um, so th that's one of the biggest things that needs to be stopped first up. Um, so th there's the agents, so the loans that the, their parents are taking out. Um, a lot of the parents are having to sell their agricultural land uh, or pawn it to generate the funds. Um, so once they do get here, uh, it's a totally different story to what agent has told them back in India. You know, they, they paint a very rosy picture. You know, you, you can work 20 hours a week and you can get a job that pays you 15 to 20 dollars per hour and you'll get your job very easily, but it, it's completely the opposite when they get here. And we, we all know there aren't that many jobs to go around, even for people who've been living here for years and years and have um, amounts of experience. Uh, somebody who's just newly arrived, it's even more difficult for them. So that they'll take whatever comes their way and hope that you know they can progress and promote themselves and end up with a better situation. If anyone is being exploited, um, ideally we expect them to whistleblow but I think until they have some sort of protection from, say, for example, immigration, uh, they will not be prepared to whistleblow because they, you know, just the fear of losing their um, work that they have because it, their visa is attached to that employer, for example. Uh, once there's more opening up, um, I'm pretty confident that the employers will start uh, to be a bit more careful and they will think a little bit more before they uh, start exploiting someone you know at the moment it's too easy